Hello everyone, I'm Luvich Schelden, tagging expert at Taggers. Today we will set up Google Ads server-side tracking. This video is the second episode in this series and we will continue with the setup from our first video. In the previous video we have implemented a data layer with WooCommerce, set up our Taggers container, set up our server GTM container and implemented GA4 server-side tracking, which is necessary for implementing server-side tracking with the other channels as Google Ads for example. You can also find this information back in the blog post on the Taggers website. Step 1. We will go into preview mode um, with our server container to check what we have previously set up. This is our server preview mode. So we have here, <coughs> sorry, um, web preview and server preview. As you can see, oh, I like to put it like this. Web preview and server preview, yes. Um, you can see view item list will be pushed to the data layer. This Google tag, uh, this GA4 tag will fire. And we can see it sends a request to our server container, it enters our server container and a request gets sent to GA4. So when we add it to cart, same will happen. GTM add to cart, fired to our server container and it enters our server container with all um, data. Like value for example. Um, currency as well, items and so on. So everything is working fine. That's that's what we did the last time. So for now, um, step one is we will add the conversion linker. We will do it like this. This is our server container. Google adds conversion linker. This one, we fire it on all pages, like this. What this will do, it will set a first set a first party cookie from the Gclit or Gbraid or Webraid that is um, attached to the ad. I will show you how this works. Preview debug. Preview web. For example, you click on the ad and gclit is like um, 9999 is added. As you can see in our cookies, you can see this has been added as a first party cookie with this value. So this value have been, has been saved as a cookie because of the conversion linker. So step two is to set up the conversions. Um, we will do it like this. New conversion. Google Ads conversion tracking. You will need a conversion ID. You can go to Google Ads to make a new conversion action. Here you can put whatever, add conversion action manually, purchase, um, purchase server, different amount, um, every, I like to put it on 90 days, but that's up to you. Now we choose use to Google Tag Manager, we will get the conversion ID. I like to work with a constant so we can reuse it. We also receive the conversion label, which is unique to the conversion. Like this conversion value, um, as you saw 
some minutes ago, the value is entering our um, server container as an event data. So we will um, take it from the event data like this. New variable ed value event data is value currency as well event data currency We will um, include user provided data. Why is it only a checkbox? Because we have in our server, in our web container, sorry, we have configured our GA4 um, tag with a user provided data variable. So this Google tag, Google Ads tag, will just um, inherit these um, user provide, provided data. We will trigger it on a custom event like this. Voila. Now we can go into preview mode to check how it works. Preview server container, preview web container. We can exclude this one. We will buy an item or several. So purchase event has been pushed to the data layer. OGA4 ecom event stack has fired. It has sent a request to um, our server container with value, with um, currency, also with the item. Let's see here. Um, you can see it entering our server container. It has triggered our Google Ads purchase tag because we have configured this, it to fire on purchase event. It has inherited the user provided data and also the conversion value and co currency codes as we configured it. You can see it here again, value and currency here. So this is the event data and we have made value variables for this here. So this is working perfectly fine. Next, we will set up a remarketing tag. We will do it like this. We want two remarketing tags, one on all pages and one dynamically. The one on all pages, we will do it like this. Oh, I think I made a mistake. Yes. That's it, basically. Just uh, include the conversion ID and trigger it on all pages. 
and then we will include a second one. Google Ads um, Remarketing Dynamic. Conversion ID. We will provide uh, send dynamic remarketing event data. We will um, choose custom configuration. This will be event name, value, and we already made the variable. Then we will choose for provide custom parameters, custom configuration, and ID will be, we still have to make this um, value. I will make it now. And the Google business vertical will be retail. Retail. This is in this case that it's retail. You have to check um, what products you sell. It can be also hotels or, or flights, I think. But this is e-commerce and for e-commerce, it's always retail. Um, why do we do it like this? Because um, the events, the items entering or a server container will have the attribute item ID. And this is not what the remarketing tag um, expects. The remarketing tag expects ID and not item ID. That's why we have to configure it manually. I will call it like this, remarketing IDs. We will trigger it on um, ecom events. Use regex matching so we can include multiple um, triggers. I think this one is a good one. View item list, view item, add to cart, begin checkout purchase. Um, yeah, this is good. And also view search results can be added as well. We will save it. But now we still have to send this parameter to our server container. So let's save it. How will we do that? We will include a JavaScript variable that takes the item IDs and iterates over all of it. And then um, gives back an array of the IDs and sends it to a server container. I have to check in my database for the script. As you can see, the script will need a input items. I will delete this because it will uh, give an error. So what this uh, custom JavaScript variable does, variable, um, does is it takes an input items, so all the items we have, and it will um, change the item ID into ID, which is necessary for a uh, remarketing tag. So we will save it. We will still need 
i that are their variable items like this we will send this parameter to our server container call it the marketing ids and this variable we will exclude it from sending to GA4 and I will show you how it works now <clears throat> debug mode server container this is debug mode web container so when I click shop this is a view item list what happens on viewed item list you will have a um, items variable that is not filled now let's try add to cart Oh, I made a mistake. It's e-commerce.items. I'm sorry. As you can see, it is e-commerce.items. Totally forgot. We'll go back into preview mode again. shop view item list we will see the variable items is filled with the item and we will see that um, the custom javascript has taken the item id and has uh, made an array of all the ids in this case it's just one what has also happened or g4 tag has fired and is, has sent the parameter marketing ids with this value to the server container. It has entered our container here. J4 client has claimed it. And as you can see, the marketing IDs have entered our server container. We have picked it with a variable, the marketing IDs, as you can see here. It has triggered our dynamic remarketing like this id value 15 google business vertical retail that's the exact um, way google ads remarketing tag expects it so we're all set everything works fine or um, conversion tags work fine conversion linker as well remarketing as well so um, that's it for this setup thank you for watching and um, that's all see you next time bye bye